Hi again guys and welcome to another specific vehicle kind of review, kind of a showcase, more so a showcase really than a full on review in a typical sense from Project Gotham 4. And this is another one of the vehicles like the Y2K Superbike from last week, which is one of my go-to vehicles in the game because not only do I just love the vehicle anyway, but it's also one of the most significant cars to be on Project Gotham because so few games actually feature this car. Now I'm sure there are some other obscure games or just other games that I'm not aware of which have featured it, but as far as I know, I'm pretty sure that Project Gotham is the only game to feature this particular vehicle. And the car is, as you can pretty easily tell, a Corvette. And in particular it's based on a fourth generation, that is C4 Corvette, which incidentally is my personal favourite generation of the Corvette, the ZR1 in particular is probably my favourite Corvette of them all, but this car in particular is a Corvette really only in name. It's not really a Corvette underneath anymore, it's a rolling research station on wheels, and the stuff which this car researches has to do with real high performance, like seriously high performance. In fact, this car is as fast as a Veyron, but it did it 20 years earlier, because the car in question is called the Sledgehammer, which I personally can really get behind. I think that's an awesome name for a car, so much so that I named one of my channels after that. And also, the company behind it is a very respected, very well-known company who both do tuning for Corvettes and also build, not custom vehicles, but vehicles with their own twist on Corvette mechanicals like the C12, the C7, a variety of others, and that company is of course Callaway. I'm personally a big fan of Callaway, the C12 I think is one of the prettiest American cars ever made, fantastic looking machine, the C7 is kind of a cool looking car in its own weird sort of way. This one though, this is the big Callaway. I believe it's still the fastest car that they've ever built, it's one of the fastest Corvettes in the world, and in real life this thing is capable of, I can't recall if it's 254 or 255 miles per hour, I believe it might be 254 officially, but either way, that's a fast Corvette. Now the power is well over 800 on this thing, it's still rear wheel drive, but there's a whole lot of tech put into it. Now what many people who maybe aren't fans of American cars or just aren't super familiar with Corvettes might not know is that the ZR1 of the fourth generation was actually a really technically advanced car and the ZR1 is always the top of the tree as far as Corvettes go of course but that generation in particular really added significant leaps and bounds to what the Corvette was and what made it as good as it was because before then you could strongly argue that the Corvette was a fairly traditional sports car it did things in a quite old school way but with the ZR1 in particular America and more specifically Chevy adopted a much, much more, you could say, Japanese approach. They had lots of tech behind the car, governing the vehicle, helping you out, not babying you, but helping out performance, making the car faster to the point where the C4 ZR1 is still a seriously fast sports car, even by today's standards, despite being over 20 years old. That's pretty impressive. And to some degree, that version of the ZR1 laid the groundwork for what you could say every Corvette since then aimed for, to be that much more refined, more focused, more competitive, and also much more forward thinking idea of a sports car, which many people don't give the Corvette credit for, but they really are very technically advanced and clever sports cars, which is just accentuated by how affordable they are. Now the Sledgehammer doesn't need to worry about anything like affordability or even the restrictions of a production car because it's not. It's just a rolling concept slash prototype, but at the same time it's not really a concept or a prototype, it's just a test vehicle for Callaway. But I think having a car like this in Project Gotham is so cool because it's overwhelmingly fast for a start. In a straight line, it's an absolute monster. It's a C-Class vehicle, again, very similar to the Y2K from last week. And unlike the Y2K, I can kind of understand why this one is a C-Class vehicle. Not that it's bad, not by any means, it's actually very fast, but because, of course, the B and in particular the A-Class vehicles really are fast and not just fast in a straight line, but they are much better through corners. Now the Y2K is still extremely fast, even compared to those, whereas the Sledgehammer, with I believe it's 880 horsepower, or thereabouts, 
isn't as quick in comparison to a modern supercar as you might assume. The top end speed is, but the acceleration not so much. It's fast, for sure. And if you're going pre 2000s, there's very little actually that can keep up with it, but against modern cars that's when it will start to struggle and will start to show its age. Now as far as the ratings go, it shares again a couple of similarities to the Turbine Superbike in terms of acceleration and top speed, because they give it a 10 for both. And that's well deserved, I just said that the acceleration can be beaten, which is true, but still, for a C-Class car it certainly deserves a 10 on both of those. As far as the braking, they give it a 5, that seems about accurate. The brakes are a little soft, a little bit dull, they get the job done but they're not the most powerful brakes around for sure. As far as grip, they give it a 4. Um, I might bump that up to a 5, to be honest, 4 seems a little bit too low for this car. I can understand why they gave it a 4. But personally, I would give it a 5, and as far as drifting, they give it a 6, which is fair, because of course giving it a score of 6 for drifting isn't just how inclined to drift it is, but how good it is at drifting, and those are two very different things. You can have a car which will whip its tail around all the time, but that doesn't make it a good drift car if you can't hold the drift, if it just immediately spins out, of course. That's more the problem with this car. It doesn't really like to drift. It has a tendency to overcook it and just do a 180. So you do need to keep the car in check, keep it reined in. It's not a traditional supercar and you need to bear that in mind. It's very much a straight line machine with all of its focus or virtually all of its focus on pure straight line ability. But the handling is good enough to work with. It's not a totally unusable car around technical circuits, it's just not the best choice of them. It can take corners if you have to, but it's not a cornering machine by any means. So overall this is a car which is certainly a standout as far as I'm concerned from Project Gotham 4. Not exactly a fantastic looking car by most people's standards, personally though I think it's pretty cool, and it's certainly worth checking out. But that's it for this pick overall, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.